Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. My name is Sean. Today we're back working on the Corvair and this should probably be the last video of the fuel injection series. Now in the first three parts, we built the fuel injection system. The second part, we got it fired up and wired and everything. The third part, we've taken it for a test drive. The last bit is gonna be distributorless ignition system. So the car is running right now on just fuel only. Um, so the distributor is still controlling the spark and the computer is controlling the timing. What I've noticed is a little bit of light throttle driving, say on the interstate, and you just barely need to roll into it and it's just got too much spark. However, it doesn't have enough spark at low throttle or at uh, low RPM. So it really needs better control. Now we're going to put on a complete distributorless ignition system on the flooded Corvair today. Before we get started, if you like seeing classic cars get brought back to life, take just a minute and hit that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. You can also swing by our merch page and pick up cool auto anatomy t-shirts like this one. Plus there's a ton more flooded Corvair content over on our website and I'll put a link in the description below and up above. So first thing, let's get the original ignition system off of it, pull the distributor out, get it on top dead center first, and kind of show you what uh, I'm thinking about uh, for the, the new ignition system. Here's what I'm thinking on the ignition system. I went ahead and installed a crank trigger, or at least the, the crank wheel, which I picked up from Ted Brown at Corvair EFI. And we're gonna be getting rid of the distributor and all of the wires and everything and going to something like this. Now this is a smart coil from like a, uh, you know, mid to late 2000s Malibu. And it basically just takes a power, a ground, a signal ground, and then a signal for each one of the three coil packs. So it's a wasted spark system. So these two will fire, these two will fire, these two will fire. So one would be on power stroke and one's gonna be on exhaust stroke when it fires, which is I think pretty much what most cars have nowadays. I think the first thing to do is let's get the distributor out. Um, I've got it on top dead center already. And then I'll show you what, uh, what we're gonna do to drive the oil pump and then how to wire this guy up. And hopefully this shouldn't be too hard of an upgrade. So to drive the oil pump, I've taken just a stock distributor shaft and cut it down. It's about six and three quarters of an inch long. So I picked up a little top cap um, that goes up here to hold this down from Ray Sedman at American Pie. And he's got instructions on how to do this, but we'll drop this guy in place and this should drive our, our oil pump without any issues and clean up the, uh, the side of the engine a pretty good bit. With the distributor plug from American Pie in place, I've also got the uh, the crank wheel, the toothed wheel in place, and it's currently, as you can see, sitting on top dead center. The next step is gonna be mounting the uh, the crank trigger itself. Now this bracket is also from, from Ted, and basically it's going to go right about here. So it's gonna mount on the bolt for the original fuel pump, and there's a little bit of wiggle room, hopefully you can see, back and forth to get it lined up just right. 
Also, we're gonna mount the coil pack. Now the coil pack that we're using is from like a mid to late 2000s Malibu 3.5. And luckily enough, if we pull these two bolts out and put in studs, the, the whole coil pack will just drop pretty much right in place. So that makes it nice and convenient. Then all we have to do is just run some wiring to the, uh, the crank trigger, run some wiring to the, uh, the coil assembly, fabricate up some new plug wires, do a little bit of tuning, and hopefully this thing will be ready to run. And this is about 50 thousandths thick here, so it's going to set my gap here. And there's a little adjustment on the uh, the arm itself, so I'm just going to put it kind of right in the middle, and hopefully that will give me a little bit of adjustability there. Okay, I think that's set. Let me tighten the, uh, the clamp down, and we should be good to go there. So when using the uh, the Malibu coil, the firing order is going to be a little different than what they have. So six is going to go to two, three to one, five stays on five, two to six, four stays four, and then one goes to three. So I don't want to keep these big labels on here. I just put these on for temporary. What I'm going to try and do is actually obliterate the um, let's see if that'll focus um, the numbers that are on here and then re-stamp these so that uh, it looks a little bit more official and that way I don't get confused moving down the line. So I think what I want to try and do is just heat up something and just burn just the very top of that number off. And then I've got a stamp set here and I'm going to try and re-stamp the numbers back in place. I've got a set of NGK plug wires for the uh, the Malibu coil down there, and they've got a, a different sort of plug end on it. But unfortunately, the spark plug end isn't gonna work, so I'm gonna have to cut these off and uh, crimp on some Corvair ends. So let me cut these out and lay them out and kind of see what looks good where. So here is the finished product. Got the DIS system all installed. All my plug wires are run. Got the uh, intake tubes back all in place. I am thrilled with how this turned out. This really cleans up the, uh, the back side of the Corvair a good bit, not having the distributor in place there. And I think it's just kind of a cool little look having that, uh, that coil pack there. The real question is, how does it run? In talking to Ted Brown, um, he recommended a fuel pulse pressure dampener for the fuel system just to try and reduce any variations in the, uh, the fuel pressure and any waves that get set up, you know, by the injectors opening and closing. So I picked this one up from Radium and it's a dash six in and out. Um, so we're just going to just make a quick break in the, uh, the PTFE fuel line mounted under the car and then we can knock this out as a potential cause for surging, lean conditions, anything like that. So let me just show you exactly where I'm going to mount this thing. Coming around under the car, just in front of the engine, this looks like a decent location to mount this. 
So what I think I'll probably end up doing is just bolting it in something kind of about like that, and then just making a quick break in the uh, the fuel line so that it'll just drop right in right about there. So let me get this fuel line off because, you know, sparks and fuel lines don't really mix. And then uh, just put a couple of new ends on it and then that should take care of that problem. The distributorless ignition system is in, the fuel pulse dampener is in, the, really the only thing left to do is go take this thing for a drive and do a little bit of tuning. So let's fire it up. And And I've got to say, that does not get old. This thing fires up just almost instantly, settles down into a nice idle. It's got a little bit of cold tuning to do still, but overall it is worlds better than it ever was. So let's go take it for a spin. I think the biggest benefit of the, the distributorless ignition system is just the ability to do some tuning on the fly. So, you know, you're riding down the road and you roll into the throttle, get just a little bit of pinging. You can look and see exactly which cell has a little bit too much spark advance. Go to that cell, take a degree out of it, try it again, keep doing until it's absolutely perfect. I've got a little bit more tuning to do with it, but overall I am ecstatic with the way that this car is driving. I can't even begin to tell you how much better the car drives with fuel injection and the distributorless ignition system. Which gets me to the next thing. This weekend, we are gonna be at Corvair Spring Fest, April 19th and 20th in Helen, Georgia. If you're anywhere close to the area, I would absolutely love to get a chance to come and meet you, uh, talk to you, show you the flooded Corvair, show you the fuel injection system, who knows, go for a ride. Um, just get to, to hang out with a bunch of cool people and, uh, and talk Corvairs for a little bit. So if you're close, make sure that you put that on your calendar to come by this weekend. We're going to be there both days, Friday and Saturday. Up next for the Corvair, I've got a couple options on what we can do. And I want you to comment below what you would rather see. So would you rather see us redo the entire rear suspension, you know, new ball joints, springs, all that stuff, or put big front discs on the car? Let me know below, but that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. God bless, and we will see you next time.